It's hard. It's hard talking about this stuff, isn't it? It's, it was definitely difficult talking about my anxiety to a lot of people. People just don't want to hear that shit. I think society has a really bad way of dealing with mental illness. And it, we have a really bad way of dealing with mental illness because we don't understand it. And anything we don't understand, we must fear. And we fear things we can't see, and you can't see a mental illness. Because right? if you get cut on your hand, you can see that. You know what to do with it. You can put a Band-Aid on it. But there's no MRI machine you can run somebody through and pull out some results and be like, all right, figured some shit out. See that big shadowy figure that looks like your father? That seems to be a problem. <laughs> Why do your girlfriend from 09 happening in this cortex right over here? And just a significant amount of your mother and your medulla oblongata. We should talk about that. <laughs> Having a mental illness is kind of like being on a first date all the time. Right? It's not really you. You don't know what to do with your hands. You're gonna, you're gonna make unapologetic amounts of eye contact. Right? Like you're sweating profusely. And you're just worried someone is going to kiss you at all times. It's very unnerving. Right? So what do we do? What's the behavior we've chosen? We've chosen to give them pills, say we're gonna tolerate them, and then label and stigmatize them. That's the behavior we've chosen to go with as a society. Right? And one of the stigmas, uh, one of the labels that gets me is, is the label of the lone wolf. Have you guys heard this one? Lone wolf? Yeah, mainstream media loves that term, right? Lone wolf? That basically means you're an introvert. You'd rather stay at home and read a book than go to a club and listen to the bastardized version of a Black Keys song for six and a half hours. <laughs> That's the sanest goddamn thing I've heard all night. <laughs> but that stigma itself doesn't even make any sense to me, right? Lone wolf? Because wolves are inherently pack animals. <laughs> A lone wolf would get eaten by like a bear or a rabbit chipmunk. <laughs> or freeze to death. Yeah. If you want to incite some fear, you should pick an animal that's scary by itself. The lone shark, holy shit. It's terrifying. Sharks are nature's perfect hunters. They're just big bags of muscle. They've existed for millennia, and the only reason we know they've existed for that long is because they find fossils with their really weird teeth that go on forever. Sharks will take bites out of human beings because they think we're seals, and quite frankly, they don't give a shit. <laughs> That's terrifying. So if your friend starts acting like a lone shark where they're just taking chunks out of your hand and breaking your legs for the money you owe them, then... <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I gotta wait for that wordplay to sink in. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Here's the thing, there's some crowds that get it right away, other crowds still figuring it out. You know what I mean? <laughs> but here's the truth of it all. We're all a little crazy, right? We're all a little crazy. How many of us in here have thought about murdering their boss for making them write another meaningless goddamn report? <laughs> Her hand went fucking straight up. She's definitely got some schematics in her car. You know? <laughs> Do you? <laughs> this show's gonna get deep for you. I feel like you might be the biggest fan of it. <laughs> yeah. Every single person in here have, has stalked an ex on Facebook and come real close to turning that digital act into a real one. Right? You left your keys at their place and I gotta go down and throw pebbles at their window. But that's not gonna work, so now I gotta set the garbage can on fire. <laughs> All of a sudden, the boys in blue and the men in white coats are called. Your face is pressed up against the cop car, and you're like, Darlene, I just wanted my keys back. You misunderstood my message, which was the problem of the relationship in the first place. <laughs> Every single person in here has thought about suicide at least once to prove to that family member how fucking important you are. <laughs> now who's going to get the milk for you? Mom? Huh? Tell me. <laughs> Some of you pull back on me. This show's only going to get weirder from here. <laughs> So if we're all a little crazy, why label and stigmatize each other, right? Why not help each other out a little bit more? Because if we can do that, maybe in the future there might not be this thing called crazy. Right now, I think in society we're walking around like it's Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. On the outside, we're wearing a nice coat, top hat, cane, speaking in ye old English for no goddamn reason. <laughs> but on the inside, we're like this deformed monster with superpowers, but, and we're just like a little sad. You know, like, we're like a little depressed and we can't show that to people because it makes them feel icky on the inside. It's like using the word moist to describe a cake. Ugh. Yeah, see? 
Yeah, that joke will actively ruin at least one person's yeah. night. <laughs> There's always one person that's like, ah, oh, great, now I gotta go home and take a shower, you bastard. Yeah. <laughs> society keeps telling the mentally ill they need to change the way they act around society, but I think it's about damn time that society changes the way it acts around the mentally ill. Yeah. Yeah. And when I bring that up, a lot of people get upset. They look at me and they go, well, it's preposterous, Chris. It's never going to happen, right? But it already has happened. There's this uh, a small little village in Belgium called Hale, right? It's spelled G-E-E-L because they're Belgium and don't give a shit about American letters. <laughs> and for the last 700 years, this place has been a safe haven for the mentally ill. They take them into their families and they help them out. They help them get jobs. They help them with, uh, with any of the issues that they're going through. So if they're having a, a, an episode, they're like, listen, you go ahead and have your episode, but you let us know about it so that we can help you. But you don't get to try to treat us like shit for trying to help you, because here's the thing, tomorrow we all gotta be baristas. <laughs> so everybody's gonna be treating us like shit. And the beautiful thing about this is it's worked. It's worked, right? It's healed people of mental illnesses that we never thought could have a cure. Bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, depression, anxiety. Right? It's the height of cognitive behavioral therapy, which means that Belgium is not just number one in waffles and chocolate, but also psychiatry. <laughs> <laughs> They're kicking ass over there. Yeah. Right? Psychiatrists have visited this little village in Belgium, and they've written about it. Right? They've written things like, you can't tell the difference between the crazies and the citizens, which is a hilarious statement coming from a medical professional. <laughs> Go figure the so-called crazies aren't walking around with glowing eyes, fangs, and drinking the blood of the innocent in the middle of the street. They look like you and me. <laughs> there is a joke about Hale. They say half of Hale is crazy, and the other half is just half crazy. So if we're following the mat, that's 75% crazy. <laughs> yeah. And when I bring this up to people, they look at me and they go, well, that's really nice for Belgium, Krish, but that's never going to work here. And that's a sad but true statement. Because countries like America, the UK, India, these are all countries that like to judge people based on the color of their skin, who they fuck, what bathroom they use, what hat we wear, and we worship money more than we worship a god. That is 100% crazy. Yeah. You know what 75% crazy means? They don't give a shit whether you're black, Jewish, pissing outside, fucking a man, woman, or a hole in the wall. And they sure as shit don't care about your spirit animal. <laughs> They're gonna treat you like you're a person. So I don't know about you guys, but I'd rather take 75% crazy for 700 years over 100% crazy for 200. But I ain't no mathematician. America claims itself to be the most progressive country on the planet, doesn't it? But how can you be progressive when you've denied an answer that has worked for 700 years? For seven centuries, there's been an answer staring at us in the face, and the only response we've come up with is, can you move? Because the television is on, and the famous people are trying to sell me shit I don't want. <laughs> yeah. And then we wonder why we keep repeating the same pattern of bullshit over and over again, right? That's that extra 25% crazy right there, that constant repetition of the same shit. But to break a pattern, all we need to do is change one thing. One thing, and we can get rid of 25% crazy. One thing, and we can cure cancer in a week and a half. It'll be beautiful. Yeah. <laughs>